Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I'm Beth and I'm a master's student at UVA. But I did also do my undergrad here, so I've now been here for around three and a half years. It's been a little while since I've done a UVA specific video, but today I'm gonna to be doing a dedicated UVA Q&A. And all of the questions are gonna be based on genuine questions that I got asked regularly, either in the comments of my videos or when people reach out to me via social media. But for now, I'm gonna get straight into the questions relating specifically to UVA and UVA student life. So the first question that I get asked a lot more regularly than what I thought I would is how much does UBA prioritise research? And the answer is quite a lot. And in fact, UBA was rated in the top 20 in the country for research quality, I think in 2021, but don't quote me on that. Second question is, are clubs and societies free to join? And just for some context at UBA, a club relates to a sports club and society relates to anything else. So things like baking, music, etc. A lot of society memberships start at five pounds for the year. I am not actually part of any society, so I can't really comment too much on that. But I am part of dance clubs at uni. And honestly, the membership is so much cheaper than what it would be to take a dance class outside of uni. For the amount I pay in a membership for a whole year, I would get probably two to three dance classes or more like one to two if I was going to somewhere in London. And for that price, I can literally take as many classes as I want to throughout the week, every week while I'm at uni. There is also a membership you have to pay to UBA Sport, which is usually around 50 pounds, but that changes every year. So again, don't quote me on that. So I appreciate that the cost of sports clubs may be quite a lot to pay upfront at the start of the year, but if you do look at the value for money over the course of the year it is really good value for money and if you can I would really recommend that you do join a sports club or a society at uni. Third question I get asked quite often is are there any field trips at uni and this really varies depending on what course you do. For some courses there are field trips included in the cost of the tuition fee that you pay, for other courses there aren't any field trips at all but most courses do have an affiliated sort of society and they will generally run field trips so for example the history society is not actually part of the school of history it's a student run thing but they do organize some field trips around Norfolk and usually a field trip abroad as well but that does come at an extra cost and the same for business as well they ran a trip abroad this year I haven't been on any of them so I can't comment specifically but I know they do exist and lots of people do go on them but there is an extra cost next question that I got asked quite often is whether the gym is free and like the sports clubs the gym is not free on campus I was remember around two years ago and it was around 150 pounds for the year and that was for an off-peak membership but again please don't quote me on this because like I say prices change every year so it's likely to be quite a bit more this year. I also often get asked about scholarships and whether UBA offers specific scholarships and the answer is yes there are literally so many scholarships available for UBA students and they're dependent on so many different things some are dependent on academic performance others depend on what country you come from so so many people are eligible for scholarships and they don't even realize so I would definitely recommend looking at all of them before you get to uni. So I'll put a link in the description to where you can find a list to all of them. And it's worth noting there are also UEA sports scholarships as well. So again, I'll leave a link to that in the description. Okay, my camera died, but I'm back. The next question I got asked a lot is whether the car parking is free on campus. And no, the car parking is absolutely not free. It's actually very expensive. Again, don't quote me on prices, but I think it's five pounds an hour between six and 10 a.m. Monday to Friday. And I totally get why the university are trying to encourage people to get there more sustainably by walking or cycling or getting the bus but yeah bottom line is if you're in halls in first year then just don't bring your car because you're not gonna be able to park it on campus unless you want to pay a fortune and it's quite difficult to find places off campus there are a few places but they generally get quite busy quite quickly if you move out of halls in second year and beyond then there are more options to bring a car because generally the house you live in will have a car parking space or on-road parking so most people generally if they're in halls in first year they don't bring their car and then they might bring it from second year onwards there are obviously exceptions to this rule so if you have some sort of a disability that means you need a car or sometimes placement students because they need to drive places they can get permits and that can be arranged through the unions. I know I've already spoken about scholarships but I do often get asked by international students whether there are specific scholarships for international students and as I've already alluded to yes there are literally so many that are dependent just on your nationality so I would recommend that all international students have a look at what scholarships are available before they get to university just check out the link that I'm going to put in the description and then the final question I get asked quite regularly relating specifically to UEA student life is what to expect from Freshers Week. And the first thing I want to say is I think genuinely that UEA are really good at putting on Freshers events that appeal to 
to different sorts of people. As we know, Freshers is traditionally thought to revolve a lot around alcohol, but UBA do put on so many different events to appeal to people that do like drinking and people that equally don't. There will be club nights throughout the week, but for an example of a non-drinking event, last year I went to a nighttime photography class, which was actually really fun. And even if you do like going out clubbing, I would really recommend trying these other activities as well, because I feel that you get to know people completely differently when you're sober as opposed to when you've been drinking. And it's also such a good opportunity to get to know campus, but also to get to know people outside of your course and outside of your flat who you probably otherwise wouldn't have met. So the next set of questions relate specifically to Norwich, but not to UBA. And first up, I often get asked what the pace of living is like in Norwich. And I always think that there is a lot going on in Norwich all the time. There's always something to do, yet it never feels too busy or too chaotic. And if you do ever feel that you need to get out of the city and to clear your head, there are literally so many green spaces in and around the city. If anyone's interested, I could literally do a whole full length video on green spaces to visit around Norwich when you're stressed. So. If that does interest you, then just let me know in the comments and I will definitely make a video on that later on. Another really common question is what the nightlife is like in Norwich. Now, I don't go out regularly. I'm not really that into clubbing, but I can tell you there are lots of clubs in the city center as well as the on-campus club. I generally just tend to go to the on-campus club if I am gonna go out purely because it feels safe and it's convenient. And UBA hosts events on a Tuesday and a Saturday night. I don't know if this still applies, but in my flat in first year, which was now three years ago, we worked out that the only night you actually can't go out clubbing in Norwich is a Sunday evening So if you are into that there is always somewhere to go and generally Norwich is a really safe city as well So if I am gonna go out clubbing in Norwich, then I do always feel safe But it is worth noting that there are so many other things to do in an evening in Norwich apart from clubbing So if that's not your scene, then there are literally so many other things you can be doing You can go to one of the independent restaurants or a cocktail bar or the theater There is so much choice Norwich is quite a small city, but I feel like there's a lot packed in as as I said, I've literally been here for three and a half years and I honestly still have such a long list of independent restaurants I wanna try in Norwich. That is such a good choice. Next up, people ask me, what is Norwich like? And obviously that is such a broad question and some of the stuff I've already addressed in my previous answers. But when I'm describing Norwich to these people that ask this really broad question, I generally say it's very historic, it's small-ish and it's near to the coast. And you're probably thinking coast, like how does that link to Norwich? But I think quite a unique part of student life in Norwich is having the coast so close by because that's just something that you don't get in other university experiences. In Norwich we are so close to the Norfolk coast but also quite close to the Suffolk coast as well and amongst the two there are so many beautiful towns and it's very easy just to go and have a day out and be back for dinner if you want to and although you obviously can get that experience at other unis I think it's quite unique so that is always something that I mention. Like I've already said Norwich is quite small although there's always stuff going on and there's lots packed into Norwich it's small, it doesn't feel too busy, it doesn't feel too chaotic. And then I always say historic because there's so much history in Norwich. We've got a castle, there are lovely medieval streets like Elm Hill, there's the cathedral and the Toonland area. And as you know, I did history for my undergrad and I'm just a bit of a history nerd, so I love that about Norwich. I think the most common question I get asked by people is whether they should live on or off campus. And obviously that is such a personal decision, so I can't say for certain which they should choose, but I can definitely advise on the benefits of both. So obviously if you live on campus it means that you're close to your lectures and seminars and everything that you need to be close to. Your bills are also included in the cost of your rent and you'll also have a cleaner come in once a week who will clean your kitchen and your bathroom whether that's an ensuite or a shared bathroom and they'll also empty the bin. So basically it's convenient and quite secure to live on campus. And then if you want to live off campus you've basically got two choices. You can live in a dedicated student building in the city centre or you can rent out a room in a student house. Living in a dedicated student accommodation that's in the city centre has the same sort of benefits as being on campus apart from the fact that you're obviously not on campus. But I think I'd probably say that renting a room in a student house has the most benefits. You can be closer to the city if that's what you want, but the rent is generally a lot cheaper than what it would be to live either on campus or in dedicated student accommodation in the city. And like I said before as well, if you do rent a room in a student house, then there is generally more opportunity to be able to park a car if you do want to bring a car to uni. So how do you actually find this accommodation? If you want to be on campus, then all of the information is on UBA's website and I'll put that link in the description. If you're looking for a dedicated student accommodation in the city, then a quick Google search will bring up all of your options 
options. And then renting a room in a student house is probably the most tricky option to be able to find. But I would definitely recommend looking on Right Move, accommodation for students and uni homes. And if you do want the convenience of having all of your bills included, then uni homes is a really good option because you can get packages that include this for you. So you don't have to go and sort it out yourself. And I also just want to shout out UBA's Home Run as well, which is essentially their sort of database of trusted landlords around Norwich. So if you get a house through them, then you're pretty certain to get a good landlord because as we all know a lot of student landlords can be pretty rubbish. I have done a whole separate video on how to find accommodation as well so I will also link that in the description if you want to go and take a look at that. So the next category is jobs and people always ask how easy it is to get a job in Norwich and I honestly would say that if you do want a part-time job alongside your study then it is fairly easy to get a job mainly because it's not just a case of going and getting a job in the city but there are a lot of jobs through UBA as well. One thing I'd advise everyone doing when they first get to uni is signing up to the student ambassador scheme because firstly it doesn't require any prior experience so if you haven't had a job before coming to uni then it could be a really good first job but also because there are such a variety of roles available within this scheme so you could be showing people around your accommodation, you could be giving campus tours, you could be writing a blog and you choose which jobs you do or don't want to do so you can really tailor your work to what skills are going to benefit you and your future career. And there are also lots of other jobs available on campus as well so you could work in the shop, you could work in the bar and there are also internships as well which is worth pointing out because I didn't know they existed, well I did but I didn't realise there were paid internships, I thought that all of them were unpaid but UEA have an internship programme and it's actually really good. I did an internship with them last year and I was pretty much working like I would be in the real world so it was really really good experience and it was really good pay. And then of course there are also jobs available in the city so there's retail jobs, there's waitressing jobs etc. And if you are looking for a job like that I'd advise looking on Indeed. Oh and I forgot to say if you're looking for a job on campus then definitely look on Career Central which you'll get a link to when you first get to university. And for the last category I know I said this video was going to be UVA specific but I I'm just going to include a few questions relating to study generally because I do get asked these questions so often and I thought if they're that regular then it's probably worth putting at the end of this video just to answer them all in one place. So first up, now that I'm a master's student I do often get asked what the jump is like between an undergrad and a master's course and I feel like my opinion on this is really quite an unpopular opinion but so far my master's course has actually been easier than my undergrad. I don't know if that's just because it's a change of discipline but I'm generally finding that it's a lot easier to get higher grades to get like a first than what it was for my undergrad and I also have more contact hours for my masters than what I did in my final year of my history undergrad so I feel that you're sort of not left to your own devices as much as what I was in my undergrad. Personally I like working independently so that was fine in my undergrad but I think for a lot of people having more contact hours would feel like there's more support so yeah I feel like for a lot of people that could potentially make it easier but I think the biggest difference has to be having that extra semester so at this point in the year I am already feeling quite tired and as much as I've tried not to let myself burn out I think naturally because throughout education at this point in the year it's kind of almost over my body does feel like it's ready for summer but actually I've got another whole semester so I think that takes a bit of getting used to. Okay next question is are there extra expenses for study materials? Again this kind of varies a lot between courses but for the most part you will not have to pay for your study materials so throughout my undergrad and my masters I haven't had to buy any textbooks or any sort of materials everything I've needed has either been accessible in physical form in the library or through the library sort of online system or sometimes lecturers will even photocopy things and upload that to Blackboard for us and I think that's sort of a general rule across universities I haven't heard of anyone having to fork out hundreds of pounds for study materials because at the end of the day universities have a bit of a duty to make things accessible Next question is how many contact hours are there and again this just varies so much between courses. If you're doing something like medicine or a healthcare course then you can pretty much expect that your uni will be like a full-time job whereas for other courses although they're still full-time there are much less contact hours. So far for my masters I've had a maximum of six hours and for my undergrad I had a minimum of three hours a week so it's not usually very much and most of your work is going to be independent but yeah unless you're on a medicine 
lesson or a healthcare course or there are probably a few others I can't think of but yeah generally unless you're doing that sort of course then you're going to have a lot less contact hours that you need than what you had at A level or B tech or whatever you did before coming to university. Some people thrive on that others struggle but I think that's the way you really grow at uni is by having that independent study time and not being sort of led through everything. And the last question is, do you get to choose your own modules? And I know I've said this so much in this video, but it does just vary between courses. There are a few courses I can think of where you don't get to choose any of your modules at all. But as a general rule, you'll have sort of more compulsory modules at the start of your course and then less as you go through. So generally, as time goes on, you have a lot more choice and it becomes more and more independent. For example, in my history undergrad, all of my first year modules were compulsory, but then from second year onwards, I got to choose all of them. So that's it for today in terms of questions. But as always, I really hope the video has been helpful. And if it has, then please don't forget to let me know by liking and subscribing. And this channel is literally for you guys. So if you do have any more questions, then just drop them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. I hope you have a lovely week and I'll see you in the next video.